There we go. Let's get you guys situated. So I thought I would do my um, journal planner lineup. And then I'll do a separate video and do my, my Bible lineup. So, so first we're going to start with journals. Um, missing one. Um, I have a small happy planner that's um, in with my Bible journal or my journal book, whatever. It's in there with that because at nighttime um, I use my Inspire praise Bible um, to do one scripture at night time. That way I can meditate on it. And then I use a little notebook to put any thoughts, prayers, anything like that. Just really simple. There's not, nothing to it. But I will be sure to show that to you. Um, let me move that over. So this one is like a mess of a bunch of different stuff. I had used the first part of it for for prayers because this used to be a prayer journal. Okay, but now I use it for Bible study. Um, I don't put all of my notes in here because my Bible's filled with all my notes. That's just. I tried doing it like this. I just can't. I just have to have all of my really important notes in my Bible. Or well, I know I'll always have them. But because we're doing Promise Cafe, um, and we're and we're giving like well, this was my own study in Romans. We're doing Nehemiah in Promise Cafe. And so I write down just enough like bullet points um, to jog my memory of things I wanted to talk about. And then I just, it just goes from there. So these are just bullet points, like things that stuck out to me. It's not pretty. It's not decorative. It's just, these are just bullet points so that I can have so that I can remember what I'm sharing. So that's what this is. And then in the back back. I start, place for sermon notes. If I watch you know, a really good sermon and I want to take notes on it. I have room for that. This actually goes right here in my little Bible bag. Which I'll be sure to share soon. So I haven't been on here in a while. Um, I went through another bout of being sick. Um, the first one was for two months. Then I was better for a while. Then it was a couple weeks. It's just extra. Okay. So the next thing that I want to share. This is my prayer journal. There's nothing like floofy or extra about it there's nothing pretty about it it's just it's just there because my thought is now the inside's a little pretty but my thought is if I could fill this up and the um, the system that I'm using if that works when I fill this up I can make it pretty and floofy and I can Christina buy it and just make it my own but the more important thing is that it works for me because I have like this much energy that I break up through the day through the different tasks and at the end of the day which is usually when I'm in here well I'm in part of it in the morning part of it at the end so when I'm usually in here in the evening I don't have nothing left <laughs> like I don't feel like you know like taking the time to make things match and to make my notes creative um, this is a tool for me so this is a pocket and I have um, prayers for love and I have a little card in here that has a prayer for Israel on it 
on the back of this has a prayer for Israel. Okay. Um, oh, I want to read this to you, and I want to tell you a little bit about it. So at nighttime, when I, um, before I go to, right, right before I go to bed, um, this is the last thing I do, is I'm doing the goodness of God. So it's so just like one scripture, and I'll read it and meditate on it. Um, I might, um, like, because the I'm using the um, Inspire Praise Bible. So it has, like, the things that you can color. And so I might take my color pencils and just, like, meditate on that scripture and color that in. Or I might just, like, stick a journaling card in there, put stickers on it. <laughs> like, it's nothing This is like, this crazy, like, artistic thing. I have a journaling Bible for that. But this is more of, like, worship and just meditation. Like, that's, that's how, like, I'm meditating. Anyways, I had this one, one night that I was having a particularly difficult night. I was too much in my feelings. Um, and I remember asking God in a prayer. Like I had written my prayer out, prayer out in here. Um, I remember asking God, um, you know, Lord, I'm, I am anxious. I'm super anxious. Um, I wish I just had a safe place where I could go and run where I didn't have to think about all this stuff. Please remind me of your goodness and remind me of your loving kindness and remind me of who you are and who I am in you. Right after, right after I wrote that prayer and I spoke that prayer, I go to that day's scripture. I read the scripture, which is good. And then I always read a little above it, a little below it. This was above it. When I read this scripture, I lost it. I became completely undone. Um, and then, because I really felt like it was like a message to me from God. Um, and so I turned it into that. Like when I rewrote it, I rewrote it in a, in a way as if like it was God speaking to me. Um, I wish I could tell you. I think it's like Psalm... 103. Um, anyways. I put it this way. Christina, trust me. Be glad and rejoice in my unfailing love. Remember, I had asked him to remind me of his unfailing love. For I have seen your tears. I care about your anguish. I will not hand you over to the enemy, but I have set you in a safe place. I lost it. Like, there are, my Bible is just like all crinkly. That Bible page is all crinkly from my tears. Like, I just, I lost it because in that moment, I was just like, okay, he really, hear, he hears me. He hears my prayers. He knew this was the scripture I was going to turn to today. I just prayed this prayer and I turned to the scripture and it's just like, wow, exactly, like exactly what I needed to hear. Exactly what I needed to hear. Um, God is so good. And that's why it's so good to read the word and to meditate on the word. Not only does the word teach us about what we shouldn't be doing, what we should be doing. Not only does it teach us about who Jesus is and his character, but it also speaks to our heart. When we're in those troubled times, and it speaks to us and encourages us and lifts us up. Anyways, I could talk about that forever, but I had to share that little testimony. So I set this prayer journal up. Um, after I read Nehemiah, and I read Nehemiah's prayer, which is amazing. He is a prayer warrior. I set this, this journal up to reflect the, his style of prayer. So... The first thing Nehemiah did was confess. He confessed his sins. He confessed his family's sins. He confessed all of Israel's sins. And repented on behalf of all of them. Another thing that he did often 
in his other prayers was he would spill his heart out to God. Not necessarily asking for anything, but say, God, this is how I feel. These people are saying this. These people are threatening this. And God, please strengthen me. And he's pouring his heart out to God. So that's what this first notebook is. Well, I have a couple things tapped, tapped in, tipped in from my other prayer journal, but um, just confession and then like I'm just gonna cover that up because it's personal. Um, confession and repentance, but also just like heart up, Lord. This is how I'm feeling. Um, I'm, I'm, Jesus, I'm scared. Um, I feel hurt. I feel, I don't know, abandoned or rejected or not enough. Like, and I'm raw and open with my feelings that day. Some people will tell you, oh, you know, feelings, you know, don't pay attention to your feelings and I'm right with that. I will tell you in a second that your heart will lie to you. But God's word is always truth. But it doesn't mean that the way we feel at that moment isn't validated. It may not be true. But you're really feeling that. And so I feel validated in my feelings when I give that to God. And then allow him to remind me of what the truth is. So that's this first area, confession, repentance, and then like if there's, if I'm having feelings, like just heart dump, like, Lord, this is how I'm feeling. Lord, this is what's happening. Okay. And then the second one. So the second thing Nehemiah did after he, after he confessed the sins of everybody and their mama. And, and repented for the sins of everybody and their mama. Um, then. That's when he. That's when he. Because he, he cleaned his hands. He was now in, in a right standing with God. So now the second portion. Is where God partners with God. And reminds God of his promises. And reminds God, God of his scripture. Um, and that's when he gets into just really praying for, for ever, other people, praying for himself. So, I still kept my prayer cycle. Um, and then, like, over here, um, this is a scripture. But, like, over here are some prayer requests. And then, I still have my prayer cycle, which is, like, the churches and ministries. Rocky and our marriage on Tuesdays, um, family and friends on, on Wednesdays, lost and sick on Thursdays, government slash leadership on Fridays, and then just wherever God leads me else. So, there's Rocky and our marriage, church, body of Christ, family and friends. Lost and the sick, government and leadership, and where the Lord leads me. And then I'll have, after I fill these up, I'll just continue doing it like that. So, I heard this, oh gosh, I'm so horrible at remembering names. But, um, my sister in Christ, Liz, sent me... Um, a link to this wonderful lady and she was talking about how she, um, her prayer, how she, oh, what she call it? Like, how she, how she catalogs her prayer catalog and how she can go back and she can see her growth in prayer and how her prayers turn from being like, Lord, shut their mouth to, like, Lord, bless them. And it, it turns into this unselfish thing. Pika, why are you under my desk? I'm not even going to. I'm not even. So, 
what she talked about was when she would sit down to pray for somebody, she wouldn't just automatically write the things that she knew. Like, she would put that in the prayer request. But um, she would sit and be still before the Lord and just pray, Lord, speak to me on what I should pray for these people. And then she would do that. And he would lead her to who to pray for and what to pray for. And so that's what I've been doing. Um, is I've just been sitting still before the Lord and allowing him to speak to me as to specific things to pray. Um, and that's how you know like your prayers are powerful no matter what because you're speaking to the Almighty God. But when you partner with God, and you pray what's on his heart for people. Because you might like be like, Lord, I pray for their attitude. And Lord might be like, well, this and this and this is going on in their life. So this is what's causing the attitude. So don't, don't pray for the symptom. Pray for the root. And I might not see that, but the Lord does. So when I'm still before the Lord and I wait for him to show me what to pray for people, I know that prayer is going to be effective. And if there's ongoing things in their life, like sickness, I put that in like the sick category or, or the lost category. Um, or um, if it's another specific prayer request, that's not like a continuous prayer request, but just like, oh, this week I got to go to the doctors. I have that section up there. I didn't show you, but I have sticky notes. It's like a page or two that has sticky notes all over it. That has prayer requests. And so though there is a section. At the end of this book. For answered prayer requests. Okay. I need to make this quick. If I'm going to get through everything. And then this one. I'm going to try not to show too much. After Nehemiah. Praise. After he repents and confesses for his people and himself. And then he partners with God. And, and reminds God of his promises. And prays over these specific things. And gives it to him. That's when he then begins to worship God. And thank him. So that's what this back here is. It's just a place for me to come. And just worship God. And um, to just be grateful and just thank God for the things that I, I pray for back here. So, so that's my prayer journal. Um, I have an Alice in Wonderland charm that was made for me um, by the same lady that gifted me this beautiful Alice in Wonderland book page. So. Okay, let me set this right here. I have one more journal coming. And it's one that I have to make. So, I had that, um, that leather cover that had in the, the A5 Stayology. But I've been so far all over the place with that thing. And I'm still trying to figure things out for myself that I was like, I don't want to ruin that paper. So, I bought, hold on, let me show you what I got. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I'm gonna, I saw... At Walmart, these journals that had these fuzzy covers on them, but they had like this much paper, and I'm like, that's not gonna work for me. That is not gonna work for me. So, that, and then. These two journals. One of them is gray, one of them is pink with flowers. And they're lined, which doesn't bother me because I'll, I'll paint whatever lined, whatever. So, 
I'm gonna make a cover for them out of this. I'll put a piece of, I'm gonna make it like two layers. So I'll put like a piece of board, or, or not board, but like a piece of like cardboard or, or plastic or something in the middle of the two layers to give it a little bit of like stability. Um, but I'm gonna make a cover for it. And I'll have my own like fuzzy journal, but you know, with with enough paper to last me a little while. So that will be the third journal. And I'm going to end it here and I'll do the planners um, in a separate one and I'll do the Bibles in a, in a separate one. But before I go, I want to show you this cute thing I found at Walmart. Look at this cup. You know I'm gonna paint it like one of my girls. I'm gonna put all my paint brushes in there. And pray to God that my crazy kitty cats don't, you know, destroy her. So, okay, well that's it. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next one.